All right, our first plane spotting vlog. So let's check what the weather and the wind conditions are like today. It's 7 degrees outside, it's 11 a.m. right now, mostly cloudy, it's supposed to turn a bit sunnier later in the day. Sunsets around 4.30 I think, 4.41 today. Uh, so pretty early sunset because we're entering the winter months. But most importantly what I want to take a look at is the wind direction. So you can see that right now the winds are calm coming from a northwesterly direction um, and it will kind of stay that way for most of the afternoon. If you didn't know, planes always land into the direction of wind. Our runways in Vancouver are situated on an east-west direction. Uh, so in this case, they'll be taking off into the west today and coming into land from the east. So the wind direction is very important to check before you plan out your day of spotting because that really dictates what locations you might want to uh, go to for your day of plane spotting. So let's take a look at what planes are coming today. We can pull up my Flight Radar 24 app, which I talked about in the last video. Um, let's filter it. Actually, let's just search for YVR. And uh, let's take a, today I kind of want to get departures. So let's take a look at the departure list. Um, so starting from 12, See that there's a Sichuan A350 leaving around 12.30. That might be interesting. Is it a pan delivery today? Uh, no, don't know, but we'll see. Air Tahiti Nui uh, Dreamliner, also at 12.50. That's always a nice livery to catch. The Air China 777 leaving at 1. You got an Air France 777-200 at 1.30. Um, Air Canada's A330. Oh, Star Alliance livery today. The, uh, not the one with the black engines though. I, oh, it is the one with the black engines. Uh, registration, uh, Golf Echo, Golf Papa. So that might be a nice catch. A um, bunch of narrow bodies. You got some, a lot of Dash 8s, a lot of 8th, 8320s. A couple of CRJs leaving between 1 to 2. Um, Air Canada Dreamliner going to Tokyo at 155. Another Air Tahiti at 130 if you didn't know. Vancouver right now gets double daily Air Tahiti Nui flights. Korean Air 777 uh, cargo. That yeah, so looks to be quite an interesting day with some nice liveries and some nice aircraft. So um, we'll head out to the spotting location and we'll see uh, what happens from there. Let's head out. Beautiful day outside. Okay, we're picking up Peterson today as well. He'll be joining us on our plane spotting adventure. Peterson, the Pete, the Peterson. Hello. All right, so this is the Terra Nova location. Um, we are south of the airport, across the river. And from here you can see the 
mountains in the background and also some of the fall color trees in Vancouver. So should make for some nice photos. super cold, my hands are frozen. So for this spot, I'm choosing to use my largest lens that I have, which is the Sony, two, uh, Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens. Um, going with this one because of the longer reach that I can get. We're at a spot that's pretty far from the airport right now. So it's good to have um, a longer zoom. And in terms of settings, I normally go with, um, on a sunny day like this with a lot of light, I tend to go with the higher shutter speed just to make sure that I get the sharper shots from this location, which is quite far away. In terms of aperture, anywhere between 7.1, f8, um, and that generally leaves you with an ISO around 100 to 300. This location is pretty nice because you get some of the mountains in the background on a clear day like this. So you get the mountains in the shot, and also right now the trees are kind of turning the autumn colors, which will turn out pretty nice in the shots, hopefully. All right. So now that I'm back home, let me go ahead and edit one of the shots that I took so you can get an idea of what's possible with a shot from this location. So the shot that I chose to edit is this one here, an Air Tahiti Nui Dreamliner taking off from 2.6 left. I particularly like this one for several reasons. First of all, the Air Tahiti Nui livery just always looks so good with those sharp and vibrant colors. So I think that'll turn out really nice in the edit. I also really like the backdrop in this frame, with the different layers of scenery. 
with the dark green evergreen trees, the mountains, as well as the puffy clouds. If you've been following my work, you know that I really do like to incorporate the landscape into my shots, as well as try to bring out the textures in the clouds. To keep this video from being too long, I'll fast forward the edit and talk through my general workflow and some of the edit decisions that I make as I progress throughout the edit. Now this is not going to be a full-on editing tutorial, this is just going to be a very high-level walkthrough of how I transform this photo into a finished edit. Here we go. First of all, what I do is I open the file in Lightroom and I do some basic tweaks on the exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. And of course, make sure that the photo is level. Very minimal editing in here as I like to do most of the heavy lifting in Photoshop later. Once I'm happy with how it looks in Lightroom, I export it into a PSD file, which I open with Photoshop. Once we're in Photoshop, this is where the real editing begins. First, I try to bring back more of the contrast and details in the focal points of the photo. I do this selectively to different elements, such as the plane and the clouds, to make sure I'm not going too overboard. You don't want everything in the photo to be grabbing attention, just the subject and other nice features you want the audience to appreciate. After that, I do some tweaking to the colors to add some more dynamics to the shot and to give it that mood that I wanted to portray. If I want to bring out the clouds even more, I apply an overlay layer that darkens the dark sections of the clouds while preserving the highlights. I also apply an inverse mask onto the plane so that it's not affected by this layer. As you might have noticed, I use plenty of layers and masks to my advantage, to selectively edit different elements of the photo. Here I'm doing more tweaks to the colors. I really wanted the evergreen trees to be a very dark and rich color. I also bumped up the cyan channel a bit, so that the livery just pops a bit more. Finally, I grab the stamp tool to clean up some of the high contrast edges such as the gears, where smudging may occur as a result of the heavy editing. And that's it, time to export. And here is a before and after of the image. So I hope you enjoyed that look into what a typical spotting day for me is like. Whether you're new to plane spotting or you're already an experienced aviation photographer, I hope you found the video helpful. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions on topics that you'd want me to cover in my future videos. Until next time, thanks for watching, happy plane spotting, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.